My name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I am here to talk about the dreaded, the dastardly loot box. As I have a couple of updates for you. Now, shortly after the whole Star Wars Battlefront 2 thing, which of course is what has kicked off a string of governments looking further into whether or not legally loot boxes are gambling and or, or if they think the laws in their particular country or state, as it happens to be, have to be redefined. But one of the first ones was, of course, Hawaii. And there was that famous video of the Hawaiian Democrat Chris Lee saying that the loot boxes were a trap, pretty much. That's pretty much what he said. He said, this quote, this game is a Star Wars themed online casino designed to lure kids into spending money. It's a trap. However, now we have four bills being introduced by Hawaii in an attempt to regulate the sale of video games that, of course, include loot boxes. So... Two of these games are actually fairly extreme, as they would block the sale of games with loot boxes to anyone under the age of 21. The other two are more in line with probably what most people were thinking, including myself, which was they would force publishers to label games with loot boxes and reveal warnings, and of course reveal the rates of receiving each reward, whatever that reward happens to be. I would say most people would prefer the latter two, bills to actually come into fruition because that's pretty much all I've been saying more information for the customer you know make people aware hey this game has loot boxes in it hey here are your chances of winning that really cool skin or whatever it happens to be just so people can buy it and know that you know maybe I shouldn't give this to my child or whatever or maybe they don't want to get involved with that because perhaps they have a gambling issue like whatever it's whatever the person's story happens to be it's totally irrelevant the point is more information in the hands of, cons of consumers in this particular instance can only be a good thing now before i move on to our second item for the loot box discussion today i do have a bit of a quote from chris lee who spoke with the hawaii tribune and he said quote i grew up playing games my whole life i've watched firsthand the evolution of the industry from one that seeks to create new things to one that's begun to exploit people especially children to maximize profits and when speaking on loot boxes and other such similar systems, he said, quote, Whistleblowers have revealed that psychologists are employed to create these mechanisms. And obviously we saw that recent patent from Activision, which basically showed that, you know, they are literally patenting a way to try and manipulate the player into spending more money. So, you know, while this is not widespread across the industry like this isn't happening with every game ever it is becoming more and more prevalent especially within AAA publishers or at least certain AAA publishers you know EA and Activision are probably the worst offenders and obviously Blizzard you have to lump in there as well but they are kind of included under Activision so we have to remember that while this is a serious concern and he does have a point I just always like to say hey look as much as I'm fighting against loot boxes as much as I do really think they should be labelled clearly because they can be predatory and people need to be aware and be informed. Let's not get too, you know, panic and screaming in the streets because there are still loads of games that do not have loot boxes, despite the fact that it is on the rise. I'm not saying we should, oh, oh, it's only a few games, so it's fine. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying let's not panic and, again, run screaming through the streets quite yet. But I'm glad that people are taking this seriously now because I think Star Wars Battlefront 2 was a bit of a warning shot, to be honest, saying, hey, this is kind of the direction that certain companies like EA want to take things. This is how predatory this, you know, they would want things to be. They basically want to make mobile games that you also have to pay $60 to play and also have to have like, you know, a very expensive console to play as well. And obviously, you know, that's not really a future that anyone wants. So. The second piece that I have regarding loot boxes today is a very interesting letter from Senator Maggie Hassan, who wrote to Patricia Vance, the president of the Entertainment Software Ratings Board. And basically, she was asking that the ESRB re-examine how games with loot boxes are rated. Now, this particular letter was published on Glixel. You will find that linked in the description below, alongside the Hawaii Tribune article that I was quoting from a minute ago. However... I thought her letter is definitely worth discussing, so let's see what she had to say. She said, quote, The prevalence of in-game microtransactions, often referred to as loot boxes, raises several concerns surrounding the use of psychological principles and enticing mechanics excuse me, that closely mirror those often found in casinos and games of chance. I also urge the board to, design, to examine whether the design and marketing approach to loot boxes and games geared towards children 
is being conducted in an ethical and transparent way that adequately protects the developing minds of young children from predatory practices. So you may recall that the ESRB has pretty much been in the same camp as the UK Gambling Commission in that they do not believe loot boxes are gambling, wrongly in my opinion, because you always get something, even if it's not what you want, it's still a thing. But if you ask me, that kind of misses the point, because it is still gambling. You're gambling for that cool skin. Like, let's say you buy a bunch of Overwatch loot boxes, just for instance. You're not buying it because you want that crappy voice line. You want it because you want the awesome new skin from the seasonal event, or the new skins that they just released, or whatever. So it is still gambling for that, and it is still activating the same part of your brain that putting a pound into the you know fruit machine that the arcade does as well and pressing the shiny button. So personally, I don't agree with them, but obviously that's they they feel feel free to tell me to go away and never speak to them again. Obviously, so my opinion isn't really relevant to them, but I definitely don't agree to be honest, and I definitely think both the UK Gambling Commission and the ESRB need to readdress this because it is gambling. And it needs to be, at least, I think, as I said, the Hawaii second two um, bills where you know, the, the the chances of receiving whatever it is and you know, clearly labelled, hey, this game is loot boxes, I don't see any issue with that. Again, it's just more information to the consumer. Now, the ESRB have responded to Maggie Hassan's letter, but to be honest, it doesn't really answer anything. This feels like a very generic copy-paste response. But, uh, you know, I'll be remiss if I didn't at least give them their few seconds in the sun. So what they had to say was, quote, For more than two decades, we have earned the trust of parents around the country by helping them make informed decisions about the games their children play. As the industry evolves, so does our rating system. We will continue to make enhancements to ensure parents continue to be well informed. We also continue to provide information about additional tools, including parental control guides, that help parents set spending and time limits to block potentially inappropriate games based on the ESRB assigned age rating. So as I said, a bit of a non-answer if you ask me, but hopefully if people like the Senator, and of course the representative from Hawaii, put enough pressure on things and obviously you know make action within their own states, even if it can't be done on a federal level, you know, that's great. You know, seeing improvements, I think, is a good way to start the ball rolling elsewhere. Obviously, Hawaii kind of kicked things off, but then we've seen, you know, Sweden get involved, we've seen Belgium get involved, UK have responded, even though I was very disappointed in their response as well. So hopefully, we'll see, as I said, I think just clear labelling is all most people would like, to be honest, but maybe some people would want more, but I do not want this to be excessive regulation, because that's the last thing we need. However, some regulation is required, because... I think, again, Souls Battlefront 2 is exactly a, sort of like a peek into the future that EA wanted for us, and obviously pushed too far too fast, and here we are. So, our final thing that I wanted to start on before I call this video is that CD Projekt Red, who have obviously earned a very well, well-earned, positive reputation among the gaming community. Well, they're not exactly perfect, you know, no company is, because obviously they are made up of human beings which are inherently flawed, they are still one of the best companies in this industry and have done a lot of really cool stuff and just shown people this is how you treat your community. Like, not only did they make fantastic expansions for The Witcher 3, they released a metric ton of free content and they've just done some really cool stuff, some really consumer friendly things. So, they have chimed in on the whole loot box topic. Now, the co founder of CD Projekt, Marcin Awinski, was asked by PC Gamer, and of course we'll include a link to their article in the description below, his opinion on loot boxes. Obviously, this is relevant because they did suggest, or they did say rather, they didn't suggest, they said, or the CEO Adam Kaczynski said, that Cyberpunk 2077 excuse me, will include online elements in order to keep it ongoing. What that means, obviously, we don't know, but this is why they were asked about it. So, PC Gamer basically asked, you know, what do you think of the conversation that has dominated single player versus multiplayer games in the last 12 months? And Iwinski said, quote, Conversation sounds way too nice to describe what is happening last year. I would rather call it community backlash. And this time around, it wasn't just a hardcore community. There are a lot of really pissed off gamers out there and they decided to speak up. Where we stand is quite simple and you can see it with all of our p p past releases. Most recently, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and Gwent. If you buy a full price game, you should get a big polished piece of, con piece of content which gives you many, many hours of fun gameplay. The definition of many may vary on a title by title basis, but in our case it was always 50 plus, sorry, 50 to 60 plus hours of the main storyline, 
with up to a couple of hundred of hours of side activities. You get what you paid for, plus we're always trying to do our best to over deliver. There is no better PR than a happy gamer recommending your title to their friends. And then he went on to say, quote, the moment they feel you are reaching out for their wallet in any unfair way, they will be vocal about it. And frankly speaking, I think it's good for the industry. Things often look great from a spreadsheet perspective, but decision makers often aren't asking themselves the question of how would gamers feel or is this offer a fair one? Gamers are striking back and I really hope this will change our industry for the better. Now, obviously, CD Projekt have dipped their toe into free-to-play with Gwent, but you buy card kegs and you get vanity items and you get cards. It's that simple, really. Obviously, there is a chance in what cards you get, but it's not really the same as a loot box, to be honest. It's not quite the same. And obviously, you can just craft any cards that you need as well. So, I think, to be honest, the part of that that really shows why CD Projekt have earned this reputation as a good guy of the industry is that end line of the second paragraph there is no better pr than a happy gamer recommending your title to their friends that has been shining through with how they dealt with the witcher 3 you know the insane amount of free content and obviously the the dlcs which are really what well, they, they were expansions they were old school expansions which we haven't really seen done for a while to be honest i mean dlc is great it can be done really really well some DLC has been really cool to play, like the Dark Souls 3 DLC, I really enjoyed that sort of thing. So DLC isn't inherently bad, but I do kind of miss the old school expansions a little bit, so to see it come back in, in, in a big way with The Witcher 3 was nice to see. So hopefully this obviously means good news for Cyberpunk 2077, but I also agree that, to be honest, I'm glad that the community reacted the way that they did, because it just showed, like, no, this is too far. Please stop. Just cease, okay? Gamers said, look, we're, you know, gamers have shown that they're happy to pay for microtransactions, probably too happy to pay for microtransactions, but, you know, that's a different topic for another day entirely. However, clearly there's a line they didn't want crossed, and EA leaped past it and then spat on it as they leaped past it as well. And I'm glad that the community was just like, no, basically. So, yeah. Anyway, um... Basically, the TLDR of all of that is that the conversations around loot boxes are not going anywhere. Because, frankly, loot boxes themselves aren't going anywhere either. Because we've seen article after article from Ubisoft, from EA, from Activision, from Bob down the street. It doesn't matter about how much money publishers are making from microtransactions. They're making more money from microtransactions than they are from game sales in some cases. So, we're not seeing those going anywhere. However, it is a way... There is a way to do it correctly. Warframe says hello. So I just hope that they improve and that situations like Souls Battlefront 2 don't happen again. But we might need a couple of those before we finally see the industry turn heel and, you know, go to a not so crap place. But, you know, we shall see. Anyway, going to be an interesting one, to be sure. I don't think the conversation on loot boxes going in there, as I already said. So 2017 might yet still be... Sorry, 2018, excuse me. Might yet still be the year of the loot box like 2017 was. But uh, only time will tell on that one, my friends. Anyway, that's me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.